Chapter 16. Unravelling the Clues Mole glared across the cage at Alfie. It was the same one she and Griff had spotted the night they'd rescued Jinx, only now it was strung up by rope, like some kind of giant metal claw, from the tallest tree in Skull's clearing, and she and Alfie were locked inside it. It was dawn now, and light trickled through the trees, shaping the branches into crooked silhouettes. Skull's boys and the hounds were still gone, and there was no sign of grief, but Skull and Gobbler were back, muttering together inside Skull's black wagon, while a pan of sausages cooked over the fire in the middle of the clearing. Mole's mouth watered. First a pit, then a cage, Alfie spat. Were you this much trouble in your camp? Mole was, so she didn't bother answering. The cage was huge and domed, large enough to stand up in and pace around and the bones that had previously lined the floor had been hurled into the clearing below. Mole eyed the enormous padlock with disgust. Her throat was dry, and when she swallowed it felt like the roof of her mouth had been rubbed raw. D did they get my name? she mumbled. Did I give it up? Alfie shook his head. Somehow you held on to it, even though Skull and Gobbler turned back from the hounds and dragged us up here. Mole thought she could detect a trace of surprise, almost respect in Alfie's voice, but he was glowering at her now, so it was hard to be sure. What, what were those shadow things? Vapours, Alfie said. Skull conjures them when he wants to guard his clearing. He says they're made from the broken hearts of witches and they feed on fear. How do you ever get past them when you sneak over to our camp? By being brave. Oh, Mole paused. And is that how we'll get past them then? Alfie nodded. That, and by you listening to me, Bleep. Mole frowned. Who's Bleep? You. Means a small mistake, and that's what you are. It'll do while I don't know your name. He let his head fall against the bars. You mucked up, Blip. I got us out of the pit, Mol muttered. No, you got us into a cage, and I had a way out of the pit, only you didn't stick around long enough to learn it. He looked away. Took me ages, but I tunnelled through the soil with my hands and penknife when Skull locked me down here before. I covered it up, though, added the loose soil to the sides of the pit. Mole's eyes widened. Alfie went on. The camp don't realise the pit's been changing shape. Not like they spend any time down there. Looked just like ordinary soil, only the patch I dug was soft. And once you dragged out the loose stuff, you got to my tunnel. He shot Mole a withering look, and it was big enough to crawl through. Mole bit a lip. Must have taken ages. How long were you down there? Alfie fiddled with his tattered waistcoat. Long enough. Not that it matters now. Mole wondered about mumbling an apology. Then she remembered how much she hated Alfie and looked down at the clearing. Gobbler stalked towards the fire to collect the sausages. Then he stole back inside Skull's wagon. Alfie took the roll of leather from his pocket. Now the light's up. We need to read this fast. Again, Mole saw her initials burned into the outside of the leather. But what unnerved her most was the wording below. From the maiden. Again. She turned cold inside. Why were her pa's bone reading and the leather roll so bent on sending her into the hands of someone who might well be a bone grinding lunatic? She glanced at the seal on the leather. It was black, like an imprint of the night. Mole steeled herself. She wouldn't allow fear to snatch back her plan of finding the amulets and avenging her parents. She turned to Alfie, her eyes narrowed. Where'd you find this anyway? Tucked inside one of the oaks I was hiding behind when Gobbler and me came for you at your camp. Didn't think much of it until I saw the bones inside your talisman. Alfie unrolled the leather while Mole scowled beside him. The inside was covered with black words, and each one had been burned into the leather. Mole tensed. 
There was something that belonged to her and Alfie had no right to it. She swiped for it, but Alfie held it close. Read it to me, he said sternly. Maul glared at him and then looked down at the burnt lettering. She was silent for a few seconds and then very quietly she said, You can tell a lot about a person from their handwriting. Lord of old squiggles to me, Alfie muttered. Maul shook her head. Mushi says writing's like a clue to what a person's like. Big bends in the G, F, J and Q mean a person's greedy. Small loops in the A, D, E and O mean the person's tight-fisted. She was fighting for time, trying her best to read the words in her head while babbling away to Alfie. Alfie shoved her in the back. Just get on and read it, will you? Maul arched her eyebrows just a little longer. Those wispy dashes across the T and F, they mean, they mean this person's clever thinking. Look, Alfie growled, we've got to read this and get out of here. We don't have time for this. Maul's mind was racing. Suppose this was a message only she was meant to see. But she needed Alfie. He was her only way out and now she had to trust him. <sighs> she took a deep breath. It's a poem, she said slowly. Then she started to read aloud. Many and many a footstep from you in a hovel among the gorse. A wild maiden lives who must eschew by marshland and heather grown coarse. This maiden she waits for the child to appear to meet on a hill turn black for darkness is spreading, stirring so near, and the murmur is starting to crack. Follow the path, past the bogmrital ponds, where the nests of the warblers lie, and further on, past dewy bracken fronds, seek the shivering nightjar's cry. Mull scanned the words again, their dew, the hill, the maiden, it was all there, just as her pa's bone reading had said. And this maiden, whoever she was, was calling for the child to appear. It had to be about her. Alfie looked at Mole wide-eyed. This maiden's living out in a hovel on the heath, among the heather and the gorse. And that child is you. She's waiting for you, isn't she? She's left a poem that links with your bone reading so as you'd find it and seek her out. Mole's face paled. She had to tell Alfie. Hard time as Bob, one of the elders in our camp, used to tell us stories about a maiden out on the heath who gnawed on children's bones. Alfie smirked. <laughs> and you believed him? Mole was silent for a second, and then she waved her hand airily. Course not, she scoffed. I kept telling my pal, Siddy, there was no such person. But shivers were crawling down Maul's back now. The poem and the bone reading were telling her to walk straight into the hands of the maiden she'd grown up fearing. Maul thought of Siddy and wished he was here, wished was with her. He'd have said something to chase away the fear. She thought of him struggling against his ropes by the river. Surely the camp would have found him by now. Alfie looked back at the roll of leather. You think this maiden knows where the amulets are hidden? he asked. Mole tried to pull herself together. Perhaps, she paused. I've never been out to the heath. How far is it? Mm, south from here for about two miles. It's just past the edge of the deep wood. Mole squinted at the poem. Then she blinked several times. She peered closer. She could have sworn that some of the letters looked different somehow. Just for a second, as if perhaps there was another message hidden inside the poem. She frowned at the leather, but the poem stared blankly back. Every letter just the same as before. Alfie hadn't noticed, and he turned to Mull. Who in their right mind would live in a hovel out on the heath? A born chewing psychopath, that's who. Mol thought, but she said nothing. Alfie shrugged. I suppose it doesn't really matter who this maiden is. 
We've just got to trust the poem and follow it. Mole was silent for several seconds. What, what if it's a trap? But there are the bones I found in your talisman. Dew Hill Maiden. Who read them? Because it's all there in your poem. Mole shifted her weight. My pa, he was the guardian of the oracle bones. Her jaw stiffened. Along with Mama, before school killed them. Oof, I'll forgive a whistle. You're in this thick and fast then, aren't you? Moll nodded grimly. A crow landed on the top of the cage and Moll was almost glad of its company. Then it ruffled its feathers and took off into the pale sky. Moll's gaze fell on the feeble embers of the fire in the middle of the clearing. It was so different from the roaring flames of in Oak Camp. She glanced at the grey trees craning over Skull's black wagon and thought of Griff breaking through the vapours to find her, only to be torn away. Was he safe, she wondered? Would he even try coming back for her now he knew what lay in wait in the deep wood? Alfie looked at Moll. I didn't believe in the bone murmur for years. Thought it was a load of old rubbish, he paused. Then I saw your wildcat. Moll's stomach flipped. Something about the way he looked when he burst from the bank. Like, like he'd do anything to keep you safe. That's not normal. He's something, that wildcat. Alfie turned his penknife in his hand. Then his eyes sparkled. Maybe he'll help us find the amulets. Then we'll be rich and free. Mole could feel tears stinging the corners of her eyes. What's it like knowing a wild animal, one who hasn't been tamed by humans before? Mole swallowed. It is the closest thing I've got to family, aside from Oak and, and Mushi. Alfie looked away. Wouldn't know. I haven't got a family. He worked his knife over the ropes that bound Mole's wrists and they fell away. Then he knelt down before the padlock and, as the cage creaked and swayed, he looked up at Mole. Lucky for us, I might know a way to get out of this. Mole shoved the leather roll into the pocket of her dress and crouched before the lock. Then she jumped back from the bars. Dark shapes were crossing the clearing towards the cage. Could it be Oak and the others? Had they beaten their way past the hounds and came and come back for her after all? But as they grew closer, Mole realised the shadows weren't Oak and her friends. They weren't even people. Far below, Mole and Alfie, eyes burned into the early morning light, wolfish and untamed, and jagged teeth shone stained with blood. There were four of them, and their muscles bulged out of their black coats as if they could barely contain their own strength. Chains still hung from their colours. Even Skull's boys hadn't dared untie them. And they circled the cage, growling. Brunt appeared through the watery sunlight, seizing the hounds by their chains, and Mole rebound her wrists. He wrenched the catch on the rope and held the cage, and it crashed down into the clearing. Mole was smashed against the side, her spine grating on the metal. Brunt thumped two balls of lukewarm porridge through the bars. Then the hounds stalked up close, their teeth like rows of broken glass, and Moll and Alfie cowered in the middle of the cage, their eyes glazed with fear.